You might have seen some headlines saying that the newest version of Windows 11, the 22H2 update, is hurting AMD's Ryzen 7000 series CPUs and their performance. Well, now I have my hands on some of these bad boys, let's test that out and see what's going on here. I'll be using both the 7900X and the 7600X for my testing here in this killer cyber power system, complete with 5600 mega transfer per second DDR5 and a monster RTX 1490. Let's jump in. Now I want to start with the gaming results here, and I should note that I'm testing at 1440p on generally high settings, say for CSGO which is on low, uh, and speaking of CSGO, let's start with that one. There was some talk of Windows 11 not carrying over the CCX aware scheduler patch that we saw in Windows 10, and it somewhat looks like that's the case here. The 7600X on the older 21H2 patch ran a little faster on average and sported by far the best 1% and not 1% lows. Compare that to the 7900X on the same OS version, well, it's a slightly slower on average, although it performed a little better in the 1% lows than the newer patch. But both are less than the 7600X. Interestingly though, there appears to be other issues at play here, as even the 7600X suffers both lower average and, rather importantly, lower 1% and 0.1% low numbers than the same system running the older patch. To be able to test a range of factors, I opted to have Cyberpunk run with its ray tracing medium setting, although with DLSS disabled. Somewhat unsurprisingly, the performance of all four runs were almost identical across the board. That is great for, you know, any 4090 owners. I mean, even the 1% and 0.1% lows weren't affected much more than sort of standard variation here. So I would say that for the, the more GPU intensive work, especially, you know, in, in a game like Cyberpunk, it's not that big of a deal. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, on the other hand, ends up being a pretty reliable and repeatable benchmark, and here, rather strangely, on the 7900X, the average performance is a bit of an improvement, only 4 FPS, but still. But the 1% and 0.1% low numbers here drop by about 4 FPS from new to old. Compare that to the 7600X, which actively loses performance on the newer patch, both on average and in the 1% lows, by 5 or 6 FPS. It's not exactly a significant number, but it is something to, to note that there seems to be a difference in how these two chips perform on the various patches. Next up is Microsoft Flight Simulator, a rather ironic title to find a, a bigger difference on. Both chips performed better on the older 21H2 patch, with the 7900X running 10% faster, 9 FPS on average. It did also see slightly higher 1% and not 1% low numbers, although it's not exactly as big of a deal here, uh, it's not as big of a gap. The 7600X also ran faster on the older patch, although with a smaller 4 FPS difference. Interestingly, the 1% lows were actually better on the newer patch, while the 0.1% lows were higher on the older version. There isn't a, a massive delta here though, so I wouldn't put as much stock into this result as, say, the 7900X's. As for Fortnite, forgetting the uh, abysmal 0.1% low figures on the 7900X, as that's from uh, the, the wonderful stuttering that Fortnite likes to do sometimes, both chips ran faster on the older patch, with the 7600X running over 10 FPS faster and netting 12 FPS higher 1% lows. Compare that to the 7900X, which ran more like 8 FPS faster on average, but 1 FPS slower and 1% lows, well, that's a bit less of an issue. I think it's safe to say that something doesn't seem right here. Some of the results show that the 7900X with its two CCDs struggle more, whereas others show a bigger difference with just the 7600X and its single CCD. 
I thought it would also be wise to look at the productivity performance, considering those tests are literally CPU exclusive, and I think it might explain some things. I'll start with Cinebench R23 single thread, where you can see both chips perform better on the older patch. It's not that much better, we're only talking 15 points out of 1900 or 25 points out of 1950, but both chips ran faster on the older patch, if slightly. Now let's look at the multi-threaded results. Yeah, you are seeing that right, the 7900X ran faster on the newer patch by a thousand points, whereas the 7600X ran slower by around 300 points. That's 4% faster for the 7900X, or 2% for the 76. What's going on here? Even more interestingly, in Blender and the BMW scene, both chips ran faster on the older patch, albeit only a second each, but well, in Gooseberry, oh man. The 7900X ran nine seconds slower on the new patch, and the 7600X was nearly 30 seconds slower. That is a substantial difference. Okay, it's still only 2% and 4% respectively, but still that is a lot of performance to be dropping just by updating Windows. So what's actually going on here? Well, honestly, I'm not so sure. I would have thought that uh, the, the single CCD being active might explain things, you know, Microsoft just forgot to, you know, add the CCX aware scheduler code back in after spending all of the time making Intel's new hybrid CPUs actually work, but it doesn't seem that simple. In some operations, the 7600X was more affected than the 7900X. The good news is that there doesn't seem to be that much of a, or an incredibly substantial difference between the two patches. It, it's not like you're getting half the performance that you should be or anything like that. But if you do have a Ryzen 7000 series CPU, well, you should probably stay away from this patch, the, the 22H2 patch, at least for the time being until there's a little bit more work on it. So that you have a, a brief look at uh, what might be a a bit of an interesting update for uh, for uh, the handful of people that have already bought one of the new chips. Uh, if you want to see more testing like this and uh, more videos from me, of course you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also check out plenty of other videos, including uh, with the system, the, the 4090 and the rather infamous now power connector. Feel free to check out that video on the end cards as well. If you want to check out the system, I'll leave a link to it in the description. I'll also leave some affiliate links to uh, Amazon for uh, our global Amazon links for the CPUs themselves if you're interested. That's kind of it. If you want to support the channel in other ways, you can check out the uh, links in the description, become a YouTube member or a patron, pick up a your t-shirt like this one or all of the stuff I made myself. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it really. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.